This is a graphic from page 102 of Language Proof and Logic, second edition. And what you're looking at is a series of concentric circles, the innermost of which represents uh, tautologies. The uh, second larger largest circle represents logical necessities. And the third largest circle represents Tarski's world necessities. So what we're getting here is a set of distinctions between ways of talking about necessarily true sentences. So a necessarily true sentence is a sentence that is always true. It is true in every possible instance that it can manifest. So let's start with a tautology. When we're talking about a tautology, we're talking about a sentence that is true on every row of the truth table in the column under the main connective. So take a look at the example that's provided in the graphic, tet a or not tet a. We're using the blocks language, but as you already know, the truth table's uh, uh, function is to look at the possible truth values of an atomic sentence, irrespective of that atomic sentence's meaning, in connection with how one or more connectives operate on those sentences. So we get the following. We have our atomic sentence, A is a tet, and we have our compound sentence, A is a tet or A is not a tet. The main connective is the disjunction, so we determine the values of negation first. Then we take the values of the atomic sentence, A is a tet, and given the values of negation, we determine the values of the conjunct or disjunction, sorry. So we know that a disjunction is false when and only when each of the disjuncts is false. This sentence is a tautology because in the column under the main connective, the values are always true. There are no other possible values. There are no other conditions under which this sentence could be false. That's what we mean when we say that a sentence is necessarily true. More specifically here, we're talking about a truth table true or tautologically true, which is a redundant, but a tautology uh, or a truth functionally true sentence. Okay, so we have uh, an idea of what a tautology is we can see, given the way that the circles are nested, that all tautologies are logical necessities, but that the converse does not hold. In other words, we won't say that all logical necessities are tautologies. Um, and we'll explain that in just a moment. For right now, though, let's try to understand what a logical necessity is. A logical necessity is a sentence that is always true. There is no uh, possible world, to use that language loosely, um, I'm not talking about Tarski's world necessarily, right? But all any possible world in which uh, the sentence could be false. So look at the two examples that uh, the textbook provides us. We have the conjunction A is identical to A and B is identical to B. And then we have the sentence it's not the case that both A is larger than B and B is larger than A. Now, why are these logical necessities and not tautologies? Well, the logical necessity takes into account some features of the notation that a truth table does not cover or does not consider or can't consider more specifically. So, for example, a truth table does not consider the semantics of the larger 
relational predicate. You and I know that it's impossible for A to be both larger and not larger than B, but the truth table can't know this. That's because the atomic sentence A is larger than B and the atomic sentence B is larger than A simply have possible truth values in the truth table irrespective of what those predicates mean. In addition, the identity symbol is not truth functional. In other words, it is not the sort of uh, entity, it's not the sort of logical animal that uh, uh, operates on uh, its elements in the way that negation, conjunction, and disjunction do. So here's a truth table with our two atomic sentences and their respective possible truth values. And already you should uh, be perplexed in some sense by the fact that the sentence A is identical to A is possibly true, right? Two instances where it uh, comes out, or I said possibly true, I meant to say possibly false, sorry. Two instances where it could be false. Similarly, B is identical to B is possibly false in two instances. Right? So, so it seems to us that already the truth table ignores uh, the, the principle of the indiscernibility of identicals, uh, which is to say uh, a, a thing is what it is and not something else, that uh, a thing has all and only the properties it has, which is what makes it distinct from other entities. Right? So the truth table does not take uh, the meaning of the identity symbol into account. It instead, it simply sees an atomic sentence that has a possible truth value. Right? So then, when we go into the uh, actual sentence that, uh, whose truth values we want to uh, generate, oops, I say I've got a typo, sorry about that. Uh, when we go into the uh, conjunction sentence, right, whose truth values we want to uh, determine, notice that we're looking at the possible values of the atomic sentence um, and the way that the conjunction operates on those values. So it entirely overlooked is what identity means, which is why you have th uh, three possible scenarios or three possible conditions under which the conjunction is false. So the logically true sentence, A is identical to A and B is identical to B, comes out false in several instances on the truth table. That's why the logically true sentence is not always also a tautology. Let's look at the other example that our textbook gives us. So here again, we have two atomic sentences, and when we look at them together, we recognize that row number one, uh, and uh, sorry, row number one alone, uh, flies in the face of what we understand these atomic sentences to mean. Now, row number four doesn't fly in the face of what we understand these atomic sentences to mean because we think, ah, well, possibly A and B are uh, the same size, right? But so row number one seems very problematic to us, but not to the truth table. Again, the idea of the truth table is that uh, any atomic sentence is uh, uh, either true or false so that when we generate uh, a truth table involving multiple atomic sentences, we get uh, configurations, permutations, possible combinations uh, that do not respect, acknowledge, uh, uh, or are sensitive to the uh, meanings of those sentences. And we move over to uh, determine our values. We know that the conjunction is the main connective. It's why is it the main connective? Well, the short answer is the main connective is never in the parenthetical. Uh, that leaves the negation. We also can see that the conjunction uh, acts on uh, each of the atomic sentences. The negation acts on the whole, that is, the conjunction itself. 
So we get true, false, 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 and then we get false, true, true, true on the negation side. So we can see that as far as the truth table is concerned, this sentence is not necessarily true. It is not a tautology. But again, if we think about uh, uh, what we understand the meanings of these uh, predicates to be, we would say that the sentence, it's not the case that A is both larger than B and B is larger than A, is ever false. So we return once more to our uh, chart or graphic, and we see that the uh, outermost circle is the circle that uh, involves Tarski's world necessities. So we know that Tarski's world is a uh, program that presents us with a very limited number of possible shapes and sizes in terms of what we can build, and then six uh, possible names. So we know that in Tarski's world, any possible object we could build is restricted to being small, medium, or large, and it's restricted to being either a tet, a cube, or a dodec. So it's got to be, if we're going to create an object in Tarski's world, it's got to be an object that is small, medium, or large, and tet, a tet, a cube, or a dodec, right? So some combination of those. In addition, that object, uh, if it has a name, is going to have uh, the uh, one of the six uh, letter names, individual constants provided. So what we see then is that in this very restricted world, there are going to be sentences that are always true, uh, there are sentences that could uh, be always false, but it's not the case that every Tarski's world true sentence, that is every Tarski's world sentence that is always true or necessarily true, is going to be also a logical necessity, let alone a tautology. The converse, however, is the case. All tautologies are not only logical necessities, but also Tarski's world necessities. And then outside the circle, of course, are those sentences that are contingently true. That is true in uh, some possible world, uh, but false in others. And then, there, of course, there are sentences that can never be true. That is, they're self-contradictory sentences. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Tarski's world necessity mm -hmm. uh, sentence type in contrast to a tautology. Here's an example of a sentence that is necessarily true in Tarski's world. So the in Tarski's world, we're restricted to three possible shapes in three possible sizes. And then, of course, we have six names uh, for those shapes. So take a look at the sentence. Uh, A is small, medium, or large those options exhaust the possibilities. And uh, we also have a, an object, A. Um, it happens to be small. When we verify the sentence, the sentence comes out true. And if you think about uh, what you could try to do to the sentence to make it false, uh, you'll quickly come to the realization that there's no way in Tarski's world to make this sentence false. That's what it is for the sentence to be a Tarski's world necessity. That is a necessarily true sentence in Tarski's world. There is no possible world in which this sentence comes out false. So whether I may have it small or I have it medium or I have it large, it always comes out true. On the other hand, suppose that I say that A is small, A is medium, and A is large. I think you recognize without even hitting the verify button that this sentence 
can never be true. It is a, a, a Tarski's world self-contradictory sentence. It's impossible based on the meanings of the predicates small, medium, and large to say that the same object is all three of those sizes. But now take a look at uh, Boole, where I've already laid out the truth table for the first sentence. That is the sentence uh, A is small, medium, or large. Um, and just as a quick reminder, the uh, main, the rightmost disjunction, right? So when we have a series of either conjunctions or disjunctions, the rightmost of the connectives is going to be treated as the main connective. All right, so while in Tarski's world, the sentence A is small, medium, or large can never be false, we see that in one case it is. In other words, on row A to the truth table. So the sentence is a Tarski's world necessity. It is necessarily true in Tarski's world, which is to say it must be true. In the truth table or on a truth table, uh, we see that the sentence is not always true. It's not a tautology. It is not a truth functionally necessary sentence. So we can make the following assessment. The sentence is not a tautology. It is, while we're here, uh, a truth table possible sentence. That is, it is contingently true because it is true on at least one row of the truth table. So we verify our assessment and we find that we are correct. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Here we focused on sentences that are always true or necessarily true. Necessarily true sentences can be tautologies, logical necessities, or Tarski's world necessities. We saw that the distinction between tautologies and other types of necessarily true sentences has to do with the function of connectives and the way that truth tables work.